Hi guys, I'm Matt. I'm the product marketing manager here at Gigabyte Oris, and I'm here to introduce our new Z390 line of motherboards. These are gonna coincide with the new 9th gen Intel CPUs, the 9900K, the 9700K, and everything in between. So we're really excited about these new boards, about some of the performance we put under the hood, some of the overclocking potential, and at the end of the day, uh, the true gaming experience you can get from these boards. So the Intel 9th generation CPUs are a refresh of the 14 nanometer, but what they've done is introduce a higher core count. So we're up to eight cores, 16 threads, and with that much horsepower, you're gonna need better thermal dissipation, especially if you wanna overclock. What we're excited about these boards is that you should be able to hit five gigahertz, no problem with an eight core, 16 thread CPU, which even 18 months ago was almost unheard of. So you're really gonna get a lot of raw performance out of these boards, out of the CPUs, and they match perfectly. Generation to generation, coming from like an eighth gen to a ninth gen, biggest difference is gonna be the amount of cores and the core clock. So not only do you get two additional cores depending on how high up you go on the CPU chart, you're also going to get higher per core overclocking. So if you can do five gigahertz on your CPU at eight cores, if you're a content creator, if you're streaming, you're going to benefit from that. In front of me, I have some of the new uh, 2080 GPUs. If you're going to use you know, a high-end GPU, you're going to want a high core count to be able to unlock all of that raw power. If you're somebody that's maybe a couple generations behind and thinking, you know, is this the right time? It might be. Over the past few generations of motherboards and graphics cards, we've been spending a lot more time listening to your guys' feedback. We spent a lot of time taking what you guys want and implementing them into our new boards. One of the main things you'll notice is the neutral color scheme. We've gotten rid of all of the orange accents. It's more of a gray, kind of monotone color. What we're allowing you to do is basically paint the board with the RGB. And RGB is, you know, a buzzword that's been around for a while. And what we've done is we've kind of taken it back a step and refined it. So if you look at some of these boards, you'll notice that um, we started to take off RGB on like the PCIe slots, some of the DIMM slots, and what we've done is put digital RGB in different spots, right? So we want it to look elegant, right? We want your system to light up, we want it to look the way you want, we want you to be able to show it off, but at the same time, we don't need it to be, you know, kind of in your face. So we put a lot of time and effort into making sure that the board can match any system. Uh, if you want to turn on the blingy rainbow colors, you can. If you want a more subdued um, color scheme, you can. You can adjust the brightness, the speed. At the end of the day, it's your system. It's not my system. And so we want you to be able to do what it is you're looking to do with it, show it off, and uh, really take pride in your system. For all of our Oris boards, we've incorporated a 12 or a 16 phase VRM design. And what that does is it's a little bit more efficient. It's gonna run cooler. And basically it's gonna unlock your CPU, right? You don't want the board to limit your overclocking. You want to be able to push your system as far as you can. So spend a lot of time going over what makes sense um, when you're matching your board with your CPU. Especially for this generation, it's very important that if you're gonna go for like a higher end CPU, you wanna go for a higher end motherboard. But we also understand that you might want a high end CPU and a middle of the range motherboard. And we accounted for that in both directions. So we put a lot of time, uh, R&D, um, money, and thought into our VRMs. We'll go into each one kind of more detailed, but I'm really excited what we're offering with this generation top to bottom. So as we talk more and more about these motherboards, you're going to start to see a theme, and that's that we've really tried to simplify and refine this generation of motherboards. And along with that comes a name change. We're introducing our Extreme at the very top, followed by our Master, our Pro will also have an Ultra and an Elite board, and we'll go through kind of what differentiates these boards so that you understand which board is right for you and your gaming environment. So if you are more familiar with our old naming scheme, I'll try to break it down so that you can kind of see what matches up and how. So if you look at the top, uh, the Extreme is gonna be kind of like a Gaming 8 and a Gaming 9. Uh, right below that, you're gonna have Master, and that's gonna be like a Gaming 7. So the Extreme and the Master are gonna be your overclocking, your enthusiast level boards, right? Right below that, you're gonna have like the Ultra and the Pro, and so that's more of like a Gaming 5 range. 
Um, it's still kind of towards the top of the stack. It's still perfect for gaming. If you want to do a mild overclock, you should be absolutely fine. And then kind of working our way down, you'll have the Elite, which will be somewhere around like the ultra gaming level. And then right below that, you'll have Gigabyte Gaming. And Gigabyte Gaming is actually pretty straightforward. You'll have a Gigabyte Gaming X, which is for Crossfire, and a Gigabyte Gaming SLI, which is for SLI setups. On the right side, you'll see the Designare, and that's for content creators, nothing's changed there. And below that, you'll have the UD series. That's our ultra durable series. So these are for good all around builds. Maybe you're building an HTPC. Um, maybe you're doing some basic gaming, some basic streaming, um, something along those lines. We've created this kind of cool chart for you guys to see where you might fall in. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to us at any time. So in my hands, I have our Aorus Pro, and I'm gonna show you some of the uh, top features of this board. So this is kind of akin to the Ultra Gaming, but it's pretty much better all around. And what we've done is we've taken a lot of the premium features or features that you would normally see on a premium board and brought them back down to the mainstream, right? We want you guys to enjoy these boards. We wanna give you all the engineering and all the R&D that we put into uh, this chipset and this series over the years and really bring you like the top of the line products and specs that we can. On this board, it has the same VRM design as our master, which is a little bit higher up and enthusiast grade kind of product. At the top here, we have a 12 phase. Uh, we have all Japanese capacitors. Um, so even if you do drop in like an i9 into this thing, you're still gonna be fine. In the audio section, we've added Wima audio capacitors. And then for the first time on all Aorus boards for Z390, we've included an integrated IO shield. And so it may seem like kind of a simple feature, but if you've ever forgotten to put an IO shield after you get your complete build put together, it's not so simple, right? Um, it becomes a big deal. So it's kind of a quality of life thing, something that you typically only see on the really, really high-end boards. And so what we've done is we've kind of brought that back down to the mainstream so that everybody can enjoy these features that you know we've been talking about for a couple generations and maybe you didn't get a chance to get in on on the first run, um, but now we brought it down to kind of middle of the road where it's affordable and available to everybody. So next up, we have our Aorus Master, and I'm really excited about this board. We've literally crammed every possible thing we can onto this board. Every square millimeter is packed with different components, different features, so I'll try to break it down for you guys and show you what I'm most excited about, and I'm interested to see what you guys are excited about as well. So the first thing that jumps out is the advanced thermal solution, right? So much like the Pro, this is also a 12 plus two VRM. It's a true phase VRM, we're using doublers, and we have the Thin array heatsink up here and on the side, and it's connected on the inside with the direct touch heat pipe. Below the direct touch heat pipe is gonna be a new thermal pad, so it increases the conductivity, increases the heat dissipation. Um, so this board is really designed to put your i9 into, get at least 5G, you can probably push up to 5.2 on all cores and have zero throttling. And that's really the, the base that we started with this board. We want you to be able to push to the limits without having to worry about VRM temperatures um, and feeling safe in running your system like that 24 seven. In addition, we've added two eight pin power connectors, again, for overclocking. Um, down at the bottom here, we have the ESS Sabre DAC, which we've become known for over the past couple generations, right? Really high quality audio for you. So if you have, you know, a high end headset or you're looking for high impedance. Um, this is really gonna come into play. Of course, we have the triple M.2 thermal guards, and we have the digital RGB PCH over here. We have some voltage readout points at the very top of the board for those extreme overclockers. Um, on the back, much like the Pro, we have the IO shield, but on this one, we have the Intel 2x2 Wi-Fi. So this is a Wi-Fi that'll go up to 1.7G, so uh, actually a little bit faster than the 1G LAN on your systems. If you're downloading something, the Wi-Fi might make sense. If you're gaming and looking for low latency, the LAN may, might make more sense, but whichever one you're doing, they're both there available for you. We've also added the power and the clear CMOS buttons for a little bit easier debugging. Speaking of debugging, we also have the debug LED. So this gives you a two-digit readout and lets you know um, 
what problem your board might have had in posting, whether it's for overclocking, maybe it'll point you to your RAM, your graphics card, uh, whatever it is is going wrong. That way you don't have to start at the very beginning and work your way up. We also have a backplate, and this used to just be for aesthetics, but we've taken a step further on this platform. Uh, if you notice, there's kind of some indents here and here, and on the other side of those indents, in between the PCB and the backplate is an actual thermal pad. So it's not just for rigidity, it's not just for looks, but it's also gonna help draw out that heat from the back of the VRM, from the back of the PCB, uh, and cool it down a little bit more, right? So we've really looked for a total solution when it comes to these boards. We don't just want to do function or form. Uh, we don't think you have to sacrifice function for form. We think that they can both coexist and uh, mutually benefit each other, right? So it's a beautiful looking board, but we also want it to be a beautifully performing board as well. So last but not least, we're gonna go over the Oris Extreme, and I was talking about how the Master had a lot of stuff packed onto it. This one has so much packed onto it, we actually had to extend it a little bit. So this is actually an E-ATX motherboard. The other two were ATX motherboards, so it's consideration when you're looking for cases, but if you're gonna go big, um, then this is definitely gonna be the motherboard for you, and I'll, I'll kind of show you and walk you through why. So. Before, we were talking about a 12-phase VRM for those i9 CPUs. We stepped it up on this one. This one's a 16-phase um, VRM solution. Uh, we still have the finned heat sinks, um, but on this motherboard, we have three direct touch heat pipes. So we actually have two, or one going from each VRM section, one coming back here to the back I.O., and then one actually wrapping around to the base plate. So instead of one heat sink um, to kind of do it all, we're actually dissipating heat in three different locations and spreading it out to three different locations. If any of you are looking for world records, uh, this is definitely going to be the board you're going to want to kind of hone in on. Moving down to kind of the audio section, we still have the ESS audio. It's a little bit upgraded from the master, a little bit higher impedance. So if you are one of those audio files, um, it's definitely going to be a board that might be of interest for you. On the back of the board, we have the same IO shield that we had on the two previous boards, but as you'll see, we've stepped up everything on this board, so we added a little bit of RGB bling to it. There's digital RGB back behind here. You can actually change the color of your I.O. shield to match your system. Going back to some of the um, debug LEDs, of course, this one's gonna have it, but what I'm excited about is kind of on the uh, left side of this board. So right here, you're gonna have a cutout for your SATA ports, right? And so for cable management, oftentimes you get those right angle SATA connectors, but they don't fit in the grommet in your case. So by adding this little cutout, you can put your SATA connectors in and it'll go directly to the back of the case. So you don't have that weird little bulge in the cable going on. Right above it is a first for us. We've put our right angle 24 pin power connector and our front panel USB 3.0 connectors. This 24 pin connector are also solid pins. So if you look inside um, a connector, you'll notice that most of them are actually hollow in the middle. They're making contact, um, but they're not conducting as much electricity as they could or not making as good of contact as they could. So if you're familiar with like old Molex connectors, uh, you'll see that a lot. And so on this one, to ensure that you can reach that maximum overclock, we've included solid pin power connectors. Above that, you're gonna have your clear CMOS and reset buttons on the board, as well as the back of the board, uh, so either direction. And then of course, the two eight pin power connectors. This board is chock full of different I.O. options. Uh, what you're gonna see here is the Intel Wi-Fi. This is two by two, uh, 1.7G Wi-Fi. So it's actually a little bit faster than your LAN ports and download speed. Um, right next to it, you'll have your standard 1G, and then this cool red connector is actually a 10G. So we introduced this on a board uh, a little while ago. It got some pretty good reviews, so we decided to introduce it to a mainstream platform, the Z390 chipset, um, and allow you guys out there to plug it into maybe your home router that has a 10G, see what the file transfer is like in your home office, uh, or just give you that kind of future proofing, right? So even though it is a 10G port, you can still run it at 5G, 2.5, or one, so it is fully backwards compatible. So that gives you two LAN ports right there. On the side here, you'll notice the two USB Type-C, but they're not just any Type-C, they're actually Thunderbolt 3 connectors. 
So for the first time, we're introducing two Thunderbolt 3 connections on here. They are Intel Thunderbolt 3 connections, and so if you're a content creator, um, anybody that you know is constantly moving files around, uh, this can really speed up your transfer times. You can also charge your phone if you want to, um, but we've got something extra for that. We've added something that um, we've never had on a motherboard before, and it's called USB Turbo Charge. So for those of you who connect your front panel connector um, and maybe plug in your phone to the front of your PC, whether you're working or gaming, just to get that little bit of extra charge, we've now included this Turbo Charge feature. And what that means is you actually get Quick Charge 3.0 like you would on a Samsung phone uh, and Apple Quick Charge as well. So instead of having to plug in your phone all day and still seeing that it's maybe still 60, 70 percent, you'll be able to charge your phone in under an hour, give or take. Um, and so it's really good for people who are on the go, uh, people that don't want to have to go over to the wall and plug in their phone. It's kind of a quality of life thing and it's something that we've never done before. And then on the aesthetic side, You'll see back here we have kind of this RGB panel, and this is digital RGB, so you can do all of the cool rainbow effects, lighting effects, wave effects, so you get kind of that glow from the side of your motherboard, and it looks really good. On the back, of course, we have our Aorus backplate. This one's a little bit more blingy than the Master, um, but all the same goodness, right? It still adds to the rigidity. Um, like I said, there is an actual heat pipe running from your VRM up here around the back of the board, and you can kind of see it up here. So rather than just put a thermal pad on this board, we actually included a heat pipe directly to the back plate. So that's going to move the, um, the heat away from the VRMs a little bit more efficiently and into the back of the case. So overall, I hope you guys are excited, as excited as I am for this board. Um, it's got everything and more, uh, removable BIOS chip, six pin power connector for your graphics card. I mean, you name it and it's probably on here somewhere. So thanks guys for tuning in. I hope you guys learned something, not only about our motherboards, but about the upcoming chipset. Uh, as you can tell, we're really excited for Z390. It's an exciting time to be building. Uh, we got a core count race going on. We have all kinds of new boards, new features, um, new VRMs, higher overclocking. Uh, I'm excited to see what kind of records you guys are gonna break out there. Um, so if you guys do have any questions, if you want more information, you can find us on all the usual social media channels. Uh, me specifically, we have a Discord channel, so if you want to come check that out, ask me some questions, um, just talk about, you know, the latest and greatest. Uh, I'd love to talk to you guys. Thanks for tuning in here at Newegg. Hope to see you guys next time.